the uh, Community Living Assistance Services and Supports Act, the CLASS Act as it's known, sure. uh, was included in the health care reform legislation passed earlier this year. And just looking at it, it sounds sort of like a, a long-term care version of Social Security. And that's probably a great great description. And, and most folks, obviously, as you know, Steve, were focused at so much other things with health care reform that this kind of slipped by. Um, and most didn't get really a lot of press, as you can imagine, you know, with everything else going on with health care reform. But it really is the government's, uh, I think, first attempt to, to put together a, a government-sponsored, even though it's not government-funded, sponsored program to help folks uh, um, you know, from a long-term care coverage perspective, which we think is very exciting. It's for non-medical expenses. Uh, it's, it, well, it, it's for really the way the way the class act is was designed. It, the, part of the challenge, Steve, is that they really haven't came out with the, you know, how it's applied because they figure they have themselves at least five years uh, to get it right after it's introduced in January because people have to be com- you know contributing for at least five years and work at least three of the five years they're contributing. Um, so I think they're giving themselves some time. We we assume it will be used for home care. Um, you know, f- long-term care uh, facilities potentially, um, but they really haven't come out with any regs or rules around how it is applied. So a lot of it is kind of guesswork at this point, other than we know they're going to get uh, between 50 and $75 potentially a day, depending on the funding levels in the program. So. 50 to $75 a day doesn't sound like a whole lot to, uh, to well, fund. Well, it doesn't, help. but for our home care clients, Steve, it really is pretty nice because you know, most of our clients use us for four hours a day. So it's just if we use average math and the rate was twenty dollars an hour, if you were getting a seventy-five dollar reimbursement from Class Act, um, you know, and, and the fees were close to eighty dollars a day for car- for care, it's pretty much a wash. Now, where it gets not covering the expense, and I know that's probably where you're going to go with it, is that if they go to a long-term care facility or nursing home, obviously it's just a drop in the bucket for those expenses. But for home care, which, again, 93% of all seniors, according to ARP, want to live out their life uh, in the comfort of their own home. You know, so for home care, it actually does go a long way for covering the cost of home care. The CLASS Act, to be clear, is, is voluntary. Correct. It requires enrollees to opt in for coverage through their employer. That's the idea. Exactly. And it's, 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 not, it's not employee paid. It's not government matched. It's simply their donations going in pretty much like Social Security is, the, you know, and, um, and then they're basically collecting it out once they reach age 65. And the other key thing, too, is that, you know, they have to, usually once they reach age 65, if there's a disability involved for younger folks, then it also can be invoked as, as well. But you have to have, we, in our industry, we call them activities of daily living, Steve. It's bathing and eating and sleeping and uh, using the bathroom and, you know, and those types of things. Um, those are called activities of daily living. So what happens for seniors and uh, when they lose some of those activities of daily living, that's when families are put in the situation of do I get home care or do they move to a facility? And so they need to have issues with at least two of those to qualify for getting reimbursed. The CLASS Act is not just limited to retirees. It's, it's for anyone over the age of 18 who may need home care assistance. Most people think it's geared to seniors because that's what folks really think about home care. But we have clients that around senior helpers' system that are not seniors, and um, due to an accident or some other uh, debilitating disease, they've they've had to actually have home care at an earlier age. So as long as you're over 18, you've contributed for five years, and three of those five years you've been working, then you can start collecting at you know, age 23 or 25. And like all provisions of the health care legislation, the CLASS Act needs to be self-sustaining. It's exactly. going to be funded entirely by premiums paid by enrollees, and no benefits are being paid out for the first five years? Right. Well, again, you have to opt in. The first time you can opt in is in January of 2011, Steve, and you have to be in it for at least five years, again, working for three of those five years before you can collect the benefit. So it, it is something that you know that, that uh, the government has some time to put kind of the the process in place for how to manage it once the payments are coming because you're really looking at what 2016 you know as the first time people can take advantage of it but I will tell you though this is a great step by the government uh, to finally recognize that um, home care and long-term care is a huge issue in this country I mean once you reach the age of 65 Steve in this country uh, your life expectancy is almost 20 years you know so what's happening is just like Social Security and Medicare have had challenges you know, people are living longer, which is a good thing, but they want to live at home, 
and what, how can we try to help take care of them and give them some, you know, some extra help in doing that. And I think this is coming a long way. And one of the first things that the government uh, has really kind of enacted that really kind of takes a look at this really serious issue within the country. Well, what if American workers, particularly younger workers, decide not to participate? And that's their choice, and that's the beauty of the program. And I think that's just like long-term care insurance, Steve. If you've ever ever looked at that coverage, a lot of our clients have it and pay for that, our services through that. But you know, it, a lot of times long-term care insurance, uh, people don't start you know getting into that kind of program until they're in their 40s and 50s and 60s. And you know, it, it certainly is probably something that if I was you know 18 or 25 and looked at this program. You know, it's one of those things, it's just, like, it's just like health insurance in general. One of the biggest challenges with health reform was you had this kind of invincible you know, males in their 20s that you know, didn't think they ever needed to go to the doctor ever. So why would they need health insurance? So a lot of those folks have that same invincibility to say, look, I don't need long-term care co- coverage now. I'll, I'll, I'll worry about it later. So I don't look for a lot of folks that are younger to jump on the bandwagon. But again, the earlier they do jump on, you know, the more opportunity they have to draw money off when they do become necessary to use it. I've got to think that the premiums are going to vary depending on one's age. If you're in your 50s and you decide to enroll in this program next year, your premium's going to be higher than if you're 25 and enroll in January. Right, and the premiums, I think, are, are ranging. I think I saw from 63 or $70 up to 113 So it, I think the government is still trying to get their handle on how those premiums will work, and it's all about actuarial tables and and some of those things. But you're right. I think the, obviously the older you are, um, the premiums will probably be in the higher range because your you're time to actually you know, put money into the fund. And by the way, that's not much different than long-term care insurance. If you take long-term care insurance in your 30s, uh, your premiums then are certainly a lot less than they are in your 60s. Still, I've got to think, if, if not enough people participate, especially young people, how's this program going to be funded? I mean, it's, well, it's based on premiums, right? It, exactly, Steve. And I think what happens, though, is that you have this huge baby boomer population. So it's a, if you can get the boomers to get interested in this, I, I think you do have a lot of folks. And again, you're not, you know, most folks, two, eight, you know, two activities of daily living, Steve, you, you might not have that issue until you're 80. So, I mean, our clients usually are in, the, in, the, in the early 80s or, or late 70s when they start using home care, and you know, we have clients in their hundreds. So, I mean, it really comes down to is, you know, you have to have the need. You just can't, it's not like Social Security, Steve, when you just get to 65, and you get paid, or 67, or wherever they're going to raise it to. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's not like that. You actually have to show the need to get the reimbursement. You just can't say, "I want my money now." And, and just to play the devil's advocate one sure. more time, um, of course, this is healthcare reform. You have to do that. Okay. <laughs> um, what would prevent me if I'm needing home care assistance from hiring a relative of mine? And nothing prevents you. Well, that's a whole different question. I mean, nothing prevents you from. Um, hiring anybody, I mean, whether it's an agency or, or uh, an organization like Senior Helpers or, or going to hire a family member or whatever and pay them. You, it's not a matter of who you pay, Steve. It's a matter of your need. So a medical person, a doctor, a physician has to say that you have an issue with two activities of daily living. Once they have that, you're going to get reimbursed these $50 or $75 per day, okay? And that can go with however we want to use it right now. There's no guidelines. So you can pay that to your you know, your sister, your uncle, your cousin, your whoever you want to can get reimbursed that money because that money comes to you. Long-term care insurance, when you get a premium paid, it usually comes to the family. The family then reimburses the agency or the long-term care home. So that's how it works. So nothing will prevent you from doing that, whether you have the class act or not. If the program is successful, I've got to think it's going to be a boon to the home care industry. I mean, this has the potential to create lots and lots of jobs in the next few decades. Well, I think that's what we look at is that, you know, we look at our industry as a community-based um, business that provides great care to let, let seniors live out their life in their own home, which is where they want to be. It provides a lot of work for, you know, we've hired thousands of caregivers in the last year, and this is an economy, as you know, Steve, that's not been hiring a lot. It's a lot less expensive to do home care, Steve, than it is to put someone in a facility. So that's why this class act program, when you mentioned, the, well, does this really cost or help you do the cost? Well, if you're using 20 hours of home care a week, this could pay for it. Now, if you're going to a nursing home for four to $6,000 a month, it won't. But any little bit helps in that regard. But for our home care companies, I agree with you. It's a boon for getting more people hired. It's a boon for giving seniors what they really want. And it's a boon for families to get the peace of mind they deserve. The Health and Human Services Department still has to decide on the benefits. They still have to decide on the premiums. But it all begins on January 1st? It does. And that'll be interesting. It will, Steve.
Peter Ross is the CEO and co-founder of Senior Helpers. Peter, thanks for taking the time today. We appreciate it. My pleasure, Steve. Thank you again.